Another nice feature is that dashboards can actually be shared amongst developers through a Git-based repository, which I will go into in one of my next screencasts. For now, it will use your browser to store the dashboards and settings that you have made in the application. Now, another very cool feature of the Hora.io console is the OSGI features, where you can actually inspect uh, which configuration, bundles, features, packages, services, server, frameworks or dependencies are available in your OSGI container. Um, for instance, for features, you can see which the available features on the right and which installed features on the left, marked in blue here, are deployed. For ActiveMQ, there are three deployed, two available. But for Camel, there's a lot more available than installed. You can very easily um, uh, deploy a new feature by selecting the feature and click on this little button here on the right. Um, the server, well, I will not touch everything, but the server will give you an overview of the ports, the version of your container, of the, the, the framework. In this case, we're using the Equinox uh, OSGI framework and the version and the ports that the processes are using. Um, the configuration tab basically provides you a graphical interface to the command line admin uh, commands to modify and update um, your configuration for your deployables. Um, for instance, if I would be interested in the shell uh, properties, um, I will be able to edit the properties here, the host or the, basically the interface listing on it, the port, etc. I will be able to add more properties. And once I click here on save, it will be available immediately by the feature using this configuration setting. Um, last but not least, I would like you to show you the bundles. Um, as an overview here, you can uh, filter your bundles for the different uh, platforms for a C, uh, CXF, Camel and ActiveMQ. You can search for your own bundles that you deployed and you can get really interesting information about a bundle. Um, for instance, you're able to manage the bundle by um, stopping it, starting it, refreshing it, updating or even unstilling your bundle graphically. You will see all the packages that it imported. Um, you will see the packages that it provides as a service. You will see the services that are, are used, including their service properties. And you also see which services are used by this bundle, the component resolve, or language resolve, or entity resolve, or et cetera, et cetera. Last but not least, it provides you some information about the build. Uh, another thing what you can do with the bundles is install a new bundle. And that is something that I will do. Um, I will install uh, the Fabric 8 Inside Bundle, which allows you to, to get access to the, the ESB log file from the console. Um, I will click tick this. Bundle installed and started successfully. Um, Okay, that's fine. I will log off. Basically, I will close this tab. I will connect again to the remote server. And you might notice there is a new feature found once we logged in its logs. And basically, it allows you to real-time view the log file of the, the talent ESB. Um, you can filter. For instance, I want everything with packs um, displayed. Um, I can filter on log level. I only want errors. Good, there were no errors. Warnings then, some warnings. Um, one of the very cool features is that uh, once you're working with the ESB and you would really get some information from the log file, this, this log file is, automate, is live updated. I will show that to you. Um, open another tab, I will log in, I'm 
oh, that's uh, well, it did what I wanted to do. Um, you see that there was a connection made, um, host key was generated, etc. I wasn't able to log in because apparently my authorization uh, or my host file in my SSH already contained a previous key. But the point is that this file is real time updated, which is really, really cool. Um, another thing that is also fascinating is that, okay, now I have a log file here, but which line of code actually generated my log file? Um, you click on the class, the class is loaded. In this case, Orc Apache SSH Demon Common Session Abstraction Session. And here you see actually the log statement that I clicked on. So you actually have real-time access for everything that is published to a Maven repository and the Maven repository is accessible by your uh, enterprise service bus uh, and by Hot.io. Um, download the code and browse and view it. So this is what we've been waiting for, but let's start with a drop of theory here. The container may have one or more camel context deployed. As you can see, only one context has been deployed now and it's our demo content-based route context. Each context is a deployment unit which can be managed globally. I can start, pause and destroy a context. A context provides a registry for spring beans, exception handling policies, configuration and resources such as data sources or JMS connection factories. A context may contain one or more routes. All routes have access to the context registry resources. Just a reminder, a route in the studio maps to a camel context. It's a bit confusing but recognizable since it adds the dash ctx suffix, which I will show you. Here we have the studio and the studio itself created a route which is called content-based routing. A lane within the studio maps to a camel route. It's important to use logical names since they are used in the ESB as a unique reference. As you can see, I named my first component of the lane employees. The Talent Studio uses the name of the component underscored with its type as an identifier of the route. As you can see here, I have employee underscore CJMS and the first instance. A route is basically defined by the message exchanges between endpoints in combination with the applied mediation logic. Typically, an endpoint could be a queue, an FTP location or a local directory. The mediation logic between endpoints takes care of the vitro principles. For example, enrichment and transformation of the exchanged message data. A camel route is triggered by an event received from an endpoint, such as an incoming web service call, arrival of a message on a queue or a timer firing an event. A route itself can be started, paused, stopped and deleted. So what's the difference between stop and pause, you might ask? Stop is performing a graceful shutdown, which means all of its internal state, cache, etc. is cleared. If you start a route after a stop, then it's performing a cold start, recreating all state, cache, counters, etc. again. Instead, you can use the pause operation. This will keep the route warm. This ensures messages is given the time to complete, but state such as timer counters, for example, are maintained. Also note, we have seen the stop and the pause operation also on context level, and the same concept applies. In the routes note, we'll get an overview of all available routes. In this case, I have only one route deployed for this context. On the tree on the left, you will find all enterprise integration pattern symbols of artifacts in a hierarchy used in the route. Attributes for this route 
show what the what can be managed and what the generic statistics are of this route. A graphical representation of the route is available. It gives you a good overview of what the route actually does without too many details. If you move your mouse over one of the components, you might see further details. Later on, it will also provide statistics about how much times the component has been called and what its processing time was. Camel has the ability to transform a ready deployed route as it, uh, and convert it back to the XML DSL, which I show you here. One of the very nice things is that you can actually modify this DSL and the route will be updated instantly on the ESB, which I will demonstrate. Currently, we only route people to the New York office when they are from the United States. I will add another WAN clause to also add an Asia office. Of course, I prepared this, so I don't need to type a lot. And there it is. When the person locality is set to Asia, I print routing employee data for the full name of the employee to the Singapore office. And I will send it to the new queue CBR office Singapore out. Keep in mind that there is some small bug in the Java to XML DSL translation, which basically skips an XPath setting. And the XPath setting here is that it should return a string. I will update it. The route is updated and we, when we switch back to the route diagram, you actually see that we have now United States with an XPath expression, Asia with an XPath expression and still the default route here.